Hello class and welcome to chapter 15, the allocation of support department costs, common costs and revenues. In this chapter, we'll be exploring the issues surrounding the allocation of support department costs, common costs and revenues. Uh, the first three objectives is distinguishing the single rate method for dual rate from the dual rate method. Understand how the choice between allocation based on budget and actual rates and between budgeted and actual uses can affect the incentives of division managers. Allocate multiple support department costs using the direct method, the step down method, and the incremental method. Objective four is to allocate common costs using the standalone method and in the incremental method. Five is explain the importance of explicit agreement between contracting parties when the reimbursement amount is based on cost incurred. And number six is understand how bundling of products cause revenue allocation issues and the methods managers use to allocate revenues. How a company allocates its overhead internal support costs, which are costs related to marketing and advertising and other internal services among its various production departments or projects can be have a big impact on how profitable those departments or projects are. Operating or production department directly adds value to a product or service. The support or service departments that provide services that assist other internal departments, such as the operating department and other support departments in the company. Managers face two questions when allocating the cost of support department uh, to operating departments or divisions. The first question, should fixed costs of support departments be allocated or operating divisions? Or how should it be, I'm sorry, should fixed costs be support of the support departments be allocated to operating divisions? And the second question is, if for fixed costs are allocated, should variable and fixed costs of the support departments be allocated in the same way? With regards to the first question, most companies believe that fixed costs of support departments should be allocated because the support departments need to incur those fixed costs to provide operating divisions with services they require. The single rate method does not distinguish between fixed or variable costs. It allocates costs in each cost pool using the same rate per unit of a single allocation base. A support department would be an example of a cost pool. The dual rate method partitions the cost of each support department into two pools, a variable cost pool and a fixed cost pool, and allocates each pool using different cost allocation base. Under either method, allocation of support costs can be based on one of the three following scenarios. It can be based on budgeted overhead rate and budgeted hours, budgeted overhead rate and actual hours, and then finally the actual overhead rate and the actual hours. When using either method, managers can allocate support department costs to operating divisions based on either a budgeted rate or the eventual actual cost rate. The latter approach is neither preferred nor widely used. We will illustrate using budgeted rates. Now, why would we not do the actual rate? Well, the main reason for that is the fact that we don't have the actual rate until the end of a period. And most managers need to know uh, the approximate cost or the best allocation, uh, best amount of cost that we can possibly get to before the end of the period. Advantages or disadvantages of a single rate method. There are two advantages that we can come up to with right away. The advantage number one is it's less costly to implement. And advantage number two offers users departments some operational control over the charges they bear. One of the main disadvantages may lead to uh, operating department managers to make sub optimal decisions that are in their both best interests but may be inefficient for the organization as a whole. Now, the advantages of dual rate method. There are two advantages. The first advantages are guides department managers to make decisions that benefit both the organization as a whole at each department. And the second advantage is allocating fixed costs based on budgeted uses helps 
user department with both short run and long term run planning because the user departments know the costs allocated to them in advance. There are three disadvantages that we can come up with. The first one requires managers to distinguish between variable costs from fixed costs, which is often a challenging task. The second disadvantage, it does not indicate an operation, does not indicate to operating managers the cost of fixed support department resources used because fixed costs are allocated to operating departments based on budget rather than actual usage. And the third disadvantage is allocating fixed costs on the basis of budget long run usage may tempt some managers to underestimate their planned usage. We can use three methods to allocate support costs into production uh, departments. The first method is direct allocate support department costs directly to operating departments. The second one is a step down partially allocate support department costs to other support departments. And the third one is reciprocal, which, which fully allocates support department costs to other support departments. The direct method allocates support costs only to operating departments. Direct method does not allocate support department costs to other support departments. In this chart, we see that the cost for support in operating departments from a sample company will see, use this information to allocate the cost using direct method. This is Exhibit 15.3 on page 603 of your book. If you see here, we have engineering and production control and materials management. Uh, be it budgeted overhead costs before the, any independent cost allocations are 300264 And for machinery and assembly, we have 329 and 227 for a total uh, budgeted overhead cost of 1.12 million. The support, um, which is 30% to the materials management, 50% to machinery, and 20% 20, 20 to assembly. So we apply that that way. If we do by management, Materials management. Ten percent would go to engineering, twenty percent would go to machining, and seventy percent would go to assembly. In the direct me method, we allocate support departments to operating departments only. Support departments are not allocated to other support departments. So basically, the support departments in the previous one would be the, um, the engineering and the uh, material management. So that full amount would go over to um, the operating departments, no matter what. And the partial amount would, you know, they wouldn't touch the other supporting um, departments. So if you see in this one, we have a total of 300,000 in the engineering, which uh, of which 214 will go to the uh, machining department and 85,000 will go to assembly. The materials management has a total of 264, 58 will go to machining and 205 will be allocated to assembly. So as you can see, we have allocated all parts to each one of these. The 300 is split between those two and then the materials is split between the other two. And at the end, we have no money in the support departments and all the money is over in the operation departments. Now in the step down method, also called the sequential, sequential allocation method, allocate support department costs to other support departments and the operate departments in a sequential manner that partially recognizes the mutual services provided among support departments. Here is the illustration of how allocations would occur using the step met down method. This is exhibit 15.5 in your book on page 605. 
So the 300,000 would be split three ways. 90,000 would be going to materials management, which is the other support department. 150 would be going to the machine and 60 would be going to assembly. Now that means we have a total that is uh, in 354 to materials management. We split those up on the two other departments. 78 will go to machining and uh, 275,000 will go to assembly. So here you can see in this chart, we have the 300,000 we work left or right. The 300,000 is allocated between the two other operating departments and the material management. So that adds to the material management. So the beginning was 264 plus the 90, that gives me 354. Then I allocate those uh, to the operating department. So same concept, all the money will eventually end up in the operating department, but in the step down method, it takes a extra step coming from engineering to material management. The reciprocal method allocates support department costs to operating departments by fully recognizing the mutual services among, among all support departments. Reciprocal method fully incorporates interdepartmental relationships uh, into the support department cost allocation. The reciprocal method is also known as the matrix method. The reciprocal method fully incorporates interdepartment relationships in the support allocation. First, the engineering and product department control costs are allocated to all the other departments, including the other support departments. The cost in the next support department, materials and management, is then allocated to all other departments, including the engineering and production control department. Those costs that have been zeroed out now must again be allocated to all other departments. Successful rounds of allocation results in smaller and smaller amounts being allocated and reallocated. You can see this chart on page 607, exhibit 15.6 in your book. So basically what happens is you have a back and forth action until at the end you finally have everything allocated. Again, the support departments will not have anything in them whereas the, um, the other departments will. The reciprocal method can, be, can also be implemented by formulating and solving linear equations. This requires three steps. The first step is to express support department costs and reciprocal relationships in the form of a linear equation. The second step is to solve the set of linear equations to obtain a complete reciprocated cost of each support department. And the third one is to allocate the complete reciprocated costs of each support department to all other departments on the basis of the usage percentages. Differences among the three methods allocation increase as the magnitude of the reciprocal allocation increases. And as the differences across the operating department's usage of each support department services increase. Reciprocal is conceptually the most precise because it considers the mutual services among the all support departments. Direct and step down are simple to compute and to understand. Direct method is widely used, but is computing power to perform repeated iteration increases. More companies find that the reciprocal method is easier to implement. Common cost. What are common costs? They are a cost of operating a facility, activity, or like object, or like cost object that is shared by two or more users. Common costs arise because each user obtains a lower cost by sharing than the separate cost that would result if each user operated independently. The goal is to allocate common costs to each user in a reasonable way. Standalone cost allocation method determines the weights of cost allocation by considering each user of the cost object as a separate entity to determine the cost allocation weights. Individual costs are added together and allocation percentages are calculated from the whole and applied to the common costs. 
Incremental cost allocation method ranks the individual users of the cost object in the order users are most responsible for common costs, and then uses that rank to allocate the cost among the users. The first rank user is the primary user and is allocated cost up to the cost as a standalone user, typically gets the highest allocation of common costs. The second rank user is the first incremental user and is allowed it allotted the additional cost that rises from two users rather than one. Subsequent users are handled in the same manner as the second ranked user. The US government reverse, reimburses most contractors in either two main ways. The first way is the contractor is paid a set price without analysts, uh, of, a, analysts of actual contract cost data. The second way is the contractor is paid after the analysts of, of actual contract cost data. In some cases, the contract will state that the reimbursement amount is based on actual allowable costs plus a fixed fee. In other words, it's cost plus contract. Allocation issues arise when revenues from multiple products are bundled together and sold in a single price. The methods for revenue allocation parallel those described in common cost allocations. Revenues are inflows of assets companies receive for products or services provided to customers. Revenue allocation occurs when revenues are related to a particular revenue object, but cannot be traced to trace it to an economical physical feasible way. Bundled products and revenues allocation methods include the revenue object, anything in, of which a separate management of revenue is desired, or the for bundled product, a product of two or more products or services that is sold for a single price. But those individual components may be sold as separate items at their own standalone prices. We use two methods to allocate revenue to bundled products. The first is the standalone method. The standalone method uh, separate revenues allocation method is used, uses product specific information on the products in the bundle as weights for allocating the bundled revenues to individual products. Three types of weights are used. We have the selling price, the unit cost, and the physical units. We use two methods to allocate revenue to bundled products. The second is an incremental revenue allocation method. Incremental revenue allocation method ranks individual products in the product in the bundle according to criteria determined by management and then uses this ranking to allocate bundled revenues to individual products. The first rank product is the primary product. The second rank product is the first incremental product and the third rank product is the second incremental product and so on. Some of the terms that you need to learn is allowable costs, artificial costs, bundled products, common costs, complete reciprocal cost, uh, cost accounting standards board, direct method, dual rate method, incremental cost allocation method, incremental revenue allocation method, matrix method, operating department, production department, reciprocal method, revenue allocation, revenue object, service department, single rate method, sequential allocation method, and standalone cost allocation method. I would advise to take each one of these and write out the definition for these and keep these as part of your notes for when you take the test. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I am available Wednesdays from 7 to 9 uh, via the Blackboard IM or any other time you might see me on there. I'm on there all the time. Or just email me any questions that you might have. Again, if you want me to take a look at your homework assignment before you turn in, please just email it and say, please review, and I will do that. I have no problem doing that. Again, uh, have a great day. And this week's uh, word is week 12. Again, this week's word is week 12. Thank you, and have a great night.